Hey everyone, Poindexter here. It is now April 1943, and Lieutenant Meyer has recovered sufficiently from a serious wound he received several weeks ago from B-24 gunners. Frustration he feels at only having one kill to his credit greatly outweighs what little physical discomfort remains due to his injuries. He is determined that his next encounter with the Americans will result in victory. With a fresh BF-109 ready to be flown into combat, Lieutenant Meyer awaits for the Americans to appear. So, let's get started. Since we are starting a new month, we shuffle the combat cards and we roll for the current weather. The roll is a 10, which is good. An American bomber raid has been detected and JG-27 has been alerted. We roll for the raid target in the April 43 section and the target is Brest in France. Lieutenant Meyer takes off and attempts to make contact with the bomber force. Contact is made, and Lieutenant Meyer will start his attack in an advantaged position, meaning that he will shoot first at long range before the bomber can return fire, identical to the use of the reflexes skill. Once again, Meyer will be going up against B-24 Liberators. Let's hope he will have better luck this time around. Lieutenant Meyer approaches his bomber from an advantaged position. He aims at the airframe, lines up his shot, and fires. And his aim is off as no hits are made against the bomber due to the long range. The B-24 returns fire. But he too also misses due to the minus two modifiers in play at long range. Lieutenant Meyer closes to medium range and will use his reflexes skill to get in another early shot. He settles in, aims at the airframe, and fires away. The bomb bay is hit, and the bombs are detonated, destroying the B-24 in a massive fireball. Thanks to Lieutenant Meyer's reflexes, the bomber is unable to return fire, and he escapes unscathed. But Lieutenant Meyer is not done. He swings around and targets another B-24 in the group. This time he is no longer attacking from an advantaged position, as this is only effective on the first intercept. He now reverts to the standard head-on attack run. Approaching from long range and aiming for the airframe once again, Lieutenant Meyer fires away and his forward cannon jams in the firing. Still, he is able to cause two hits to the bomber. The controls are hit along with the airframe and one gunner. The B-24 returns fire, but it's ineffective due to the long range attack. Lieutenant Meyer, amazed at his luck, closes to medium range and calls on his wingman to assist. With only his forward machine guns left, Lieutenant Meyer aims for the airframe and fires. But both hits have no effect. The B-24 returns fire. And due to a wounded gunner, only one hit is scored on the airframe. Lieutenant Meyer's wingman now lines up his shot at the bomber and fires. The B-24 takes four random hits destroying the airframe, damaging the controls, and wounding two more gunners. Another Liberator is shot down, and Lieutenant Meyer's wingman scores his first kill. But his aircraft is damaged by the B-24 gunners before she falls out of the sky. 
With his wingman's 109 damaged and his own cannon jammed, Lieutenant Meyer returns to Bernay, where he lands safely. Lieutenant Meyer's long absence has not diminished his skills. For successfully destroying a second enemy bomber, Lieutenant Meyer is awarded the Iron Cross First Class. With this award, Lieutenant Meyer now has three prestige points. Also, since this is his fourth sortie, both Meyer and his wingman receive one experience point as well. Congratulations, Lieutenant. We update the player log and make note of the wingman's first kill. With three prestige points, Lieutenant Meyer takes advantage of the opportunity to begin conversion training in the FW-190. The 190 is slightly more rugged than the 109, especially around the engine, as its radial design is more durable. Also, at full ammo capacity, its firepower is double that of the 109 G4. It also has a slightly longer range than the 109. Its drawbacks are its speed, which is slightly less than the 109, and it is also less maneuverable, as there is no agile trait. In short, the 190 is much more effective against bombers than Allied escort fighters. First, we'll need to roll for aircraft availability in order to see which models of 190 are currently available. After rolling on chart R1, it appears that we have the choice of the A4, A5, and the A4R6. In the game, the A4 and A5 are identical, so there is no benefit in choosing one over the other, except for the small possibility of one model being unavailable when rolling for aircraft availability. However, the A4R6 is different in one important aspect. This model can carry air-to-air -air rockets, the Werfer Granata 21, very useful for breaking up bomber formations. When your target is out of formation, especially the B-17, its defensive fire is less effective. Since Lieutenant Meyer currently has three prestige points, he has enough to qualify to fly the A4R6, which Lieutenant Meyer will choose as his new mount. Since Lieutenant Meyer is transitioning to a completely different fighter model, he will miss the next two sorties as he becomes acclimated with the 190. As a result, he will be available to fly again at the beginning of May 1943. His presence is needed as the Americans are on their way once again. Since we're starting a new month, we shuffle the combat cards and we proceed to the weather check. And the weather is good. The target today is Kiel in the Bremen area. Unfortunately, Bremen is out of range of our fighter, so Lieutenant Meyer does not take off for this raid. Looking at the May 43 target chart, we see that a large number of raids will be going to Bremen this month. Remaining at Bernay Airfield in the French zone will mean that a large number of raids will not be intercepted. As Lieutenant Meyer does not have enough prestige points to transfer, he needs two. He will have to remain at Bernay for the time being and hope for the best. The second and third sorties are also a bust as the raids head to Wilhelmshaven in the Bremen area. But the fourth sortie finally bears fruit, as the Americans head for Saint-Omer airfield in the French zone. The weather is good, and Lieutenant Meyer races to his 190 and takes off on his first combat sortie of the month. He makes contact with the force and spots a group of unescorted B-17s. Maneuvering to the head-on position, 
Lieutenant Meyer begins his rocket attack outside the range of the B-17's defensive fire. The Werfer Granata rockets don't do a lot of damage if they hit the target. However, if they do hit, the bomber will be knocked out of formation, making it an easier target. We simply roll two six-sided dice and check the result. Lieutenant Meyer lets loose his rockets. The rockets do their work and cause two airframe hits to the bomber. One hits a B-17 gunner, the other strikes one of the starboard engines. With this successful rocket attack, the B-17 is temporarily out of formation. Lieutenant Meyer begins his attack run at long range. He lines up on the airframe and fires. Damage is done to the airframe and the controls, with another B-17 gunner knocked out. The B-17 returns fire. Lieutenant Meyer takes a strike in the cockpit area, but luck is with him this time, as the hit has no effect and he is not wounded. Smelling blood in the water, Lieutenant Meyer closes to medium range and uses his reflexes skill to get in a first shot. Aiming for the airframe once again, he fires away. One hit has no effect, but the remainder strike home, severely damaging the airframe and destroying the controls. The B-17 does not return fire due to Lieutenant Meyer's reflexes. Unable to keep the bomber in the air, the B-17 spirals wildly out of control and crashes into the ground. Lieutenant Meyer chalks up another bomber kill. Since there are no escort fighters to deal with, Lieutenant Meyer wheels around and targets another bomber. With no rockets left, he begins his attack at long range, with a B-17 already in formation. His MGFF cannons are out of ammunition, so his firepower loses four points. But there is still plenty of MG-151 ammunition to spare, and he has taken no damage. This time, the fight will be more even. Lieutenant Meyer lines up on the airframe and opens fire. Three hits are scored against the engines, with the port outboard engine being knocked out. The B-17 returns fire and hits the airframe and controls. Undaunted, Lieutenant Meyer closes to medium range. He lines up on the airframe and fires. The airframe and port wing are peppered with cannon fire, and a gunner is knocked out, along with a hit to the inboard starboard engine. The B-17 returns fire. And Lieutenant Meyer is lucky to have survived such a burst. He barely misses being wounded again, but his landing gear is knocked out, and he takes a hit to the port wing. The B-17 looms large in his gun sight as Lieutenant Meyer moves to close range. He'll also call on the assistance of his wingman. This bomber is not getting away. Due to both starboard engines being damaged, Lieutenant Meyer shifts his aim to the starboard wing in the hopes that destroying one or both engines will cripple the bomber. Lieutenant Meyer hunkers down and fires. The starboard wing takes a hit, along with another gunner, and both engines are destroyed. The crippled B-17 returns fire, subtracting one hit due to a wounded gunner. Four hits are scored, damaging the airframe, the landing gear again, and knocking out the engine booster. Also, the forward MG-151 cannons are knocked out, reducing the 190's total firepower to two. But it's not over yet, as Meyer's wingman makes his attack run. The bomber takes four random airframe hits. 
The wingman is damaged during the attack, but the bomber can take no more as the airframe is destroyed and three more gunners are wounded. Lieutenant Meyer's wingman scores yet another kill. With his aircraft sufficiently shot up, Lieutenant Meyer peels off and makes his way home. We'll need to add plus two to the die roll due to damage sustained to Meyer's landing gear and his controls. A roll of six makes eight, and Lieutenant Meyer lands safely at Bernay. Lieutenant Meyer's 190 took at least six hits. The plane has taken far too much damage and will be written off. However, Meyer does immediately receive a new replacement aircraft and will not lose a sortie as a result. We update the player log with our new victories. Lieutenant Meyer currently has three kills, all bombers, and his wingman has two. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Meyer's new rocket-equipped FW-190 has proven to be quite lethal to unescorted bombing raids. The problem is that intercepts have been few and far between due to the Americans concentrating their attacks around the Bremen area, just beyond the 190's range limit. At the moment, transfer to another closer airfield cannot be done. Lieutenant Meyer doesn't yet have the prestige. However, if he continues to perform as well as his last sortie, higher prestige will not be long in coming. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk again soon.